Well, if you guys have ever had mock scrape failures, it can be a pretty frustrating feeling. I've had a lot of them over my days. And after many years of making mock scrapes and hunting over them, I wanted to talk about how in about, oh, I'd say 90% of the cases, if you have a mock scrape failure, it's got a common denominator in almost, almost all the situations. And that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video today. Right now I'm crossing a swamp, heading back to one of my rut hunting funnels. And I'm gonna go back there, make a, a mock scrape, show you guys how I make mine. You can see I got my couple of branches with me right now in tow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lace these up, get my mock scrape set up and uh, talk about kind of that main issue or, or philosophical reason behind those mock scrape failures. So stick around and once I get back there, I'm gonna try to minimize the amount of talking I do and camera work because I'm gonna be hunting back here this fall. All right, now the first thing I do when I make my mock scrapes is I'll just go and grab a couple of these uh, either spruce or balsam branches in the part of the country where I'm at the vast majority of the primary scrapes that I've found, so scrapes that get visited by multiple bucks and does throughout each fall, the vast majority of them are on some type of conifer branch like this. So I'm just gonna grab a couple of these branches and then I'll get them tied up over by my hunting spot. So the big misconception with mock scrapes is that if you put one out, you put a little scent on it, it's just gonna pull bucks in from all over the place. And that's just not the case. Um, mock scrapes are not something, they're, they're not a corn pile, you know? They're not something that will just pull deer in from all over the place. All mock scrapes do is pull back the curtain and reveal what was already happening in a certain area. So what I mean by that is you, a good hunting spot doesn't start with the mock scrape and then you know the deer follow it doesn't work that way it actually works in the exact reverse order of that first you need to find that good hunting area that good hunting spot and what's a good hunting spot well in my case a lot of public land hunting a good hunting spot is an area that's difficult to access for other hunters. As you can see right now, I've got a big swamp that I'm crossing. That's my barrier to access in this case, this big wet swamp. Um, most guys are unwilling to cross these, especially in the dark and a headlamp before they go hunting. So that good hunting spot is an area that's difficult to get to for other hunters, meaning you, in relative terms, you have the place to yourself, but then also has that dull family group that doe zone, as I like to call it. Um, just an area where those doe family groups hang out. And of course, they're gonna be hanging out by food sources. So my setup here today is, there's some private land off here to the west. And there's a bunch of hay fields, alfalfa, um, things like that. They, they put up round bales and things in the summertime. And there's always does out in those fields, out in that area. And a bunch of public where I'm at, I can cross this swamp, get up on the backside. So I'm in an area with an elevated or denser than average population of does. And it's difficult to get to. There's not a lot of guys who go back into this area. And so that's the that's really the foundation in the first place that you need to be thinking about when you're gonna start a mock scrape. So getting back to my original point about you need to find the good spot first that's how you have an effective mock scrape, is when you find that doe zone in the first place. Find a good food source on private land, it might be by your food plots. On public land, it might be by the private side. Maybe there's some egg nearby, some type of food source that you can hunt nearby and still take advantage of those elevated deer numbers on the private side. Mock scrapes are nothing but a communication tool between deer and on the good primary scrapes, whether they're natural primary scrapes or my own mock scrapes that I created, I get tons of doe hitting them, does hitting them throughout the fall. It's really incredible how many does will use those things. 
And so they're leaving their scent behind. Bucks are leaving theirs and it's really remarkable. So that's really the key here with this is when you're thinking about areas to put a mock scrape or uh, areas to hunt in general, you need to have that doe family group there first. Then comes the mock scrape or the primary scrape, not in the other order. Um, if you just go putting a mock scrape and some scent somewhere in the woods, it's not going to get adopted. It's nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, that mock scrape won't get adopted. If you just randomly, you know, you're throwing darts at the board and you like this hunting spot just because you like it and it's a neat area, it doesn't work that way. You need to find that elevated doe population center first, that doe zone, and that's an area that bucks feel the need to scrape in in the first place. So scrapes always exist and only exist in the presence of does. And so that's one of the big misconceptions and one of the missing pieces when guys are out making mock scrapes, trying to find hunting areas, they're trying to force the issue by putting the mock scrape up first hoping that it will turn into a big buck destination when in reality all those big bucks are you know a half mile away where all the does are at somewhere else and no matter how no matter how bad you want it no matter how good your scent is that you put on it you can't pull those bucks away from those does and make your spot better just because you made a mock scrape you need to find that good place in the first place or create it on private land then those mock scrapes will just come naturally when you put one out, like this area I'm heading back to right now, it just lights up every fall because the right ingredients were there in the first place. I had, we have the food, we have the elevated doe numbers, we have those doe, that doe zone where the doe family groups are orbiting and satelliting around this area in the first place. And so when I've made my own mock scrapes back here, and these, this is gonna be a true mock scrape, one that I created in the first place, there was never a, a perennial or primary scrape here before but because the right ingredients were already in place the bucks instantly adopted and just start using it because they were there in the first place so the mock scrapes for me are a great way to get inventory about what bucks are in my area and but more importantly than that it will if a buck is using a given woods or area it could pull him over one morning or one evening hunt right into bow range and then I can position that buck exactly where I want it 25 yards or so away from my tree stand and when he comes in to hit it that creates a, a really good shot opportunity and that's the that's the science behind it that's the philosophy behind it and now let's get back in here I'm going to try to be a little bit quiet and I'll just briefly show you guys my mock scrape setup back in here <laughs> 